Welcome to the first of what we hope will be a regular series of interviews with members of the Trinity family whose volunteerism helps sustain and enrich the life of this church. My name is Bob Dorland, and for those of you who haven't put a name to the face of the gentleman who greets you each Sunday, this is Joe Zeta. Joe, your most obvious role is that you are literally the face of Trinity. You are the first person that people usually see as they climb the steps of the building you lovingly refer to as the doghouse. We'll get back to that one later. How long have you been doing this? I know it's been a while because yours was the first face my family and I saw when we moved to Connecticut 20 years ago. It, it somewhat frightens me to be thought of as the face of Trinity because I'm somewhere between uh, welcoming Usher and a gargoyle at this point. Uh, I have been doing this uh, as long as I've been ushering, and it's been over 20 years. Uh, my purpose for greeting people as they come in the church uh, has pr a practical origin. Uh, very often, as the service is about to start, it's important for me to know who is still straggling in. And I'm in the position of being able to hold up the procession until uh, the last people have come in, uh, which I'm happy to do uh, rather than disrupt the service later on. So uh, I do rather keep an eye out on the people coming up the steps. And I guess that's how that all began. Okay. And how long have you been attending Trinity? I started coming in 1971 with the arrival of Steve Lohr, uh, the organist choir master who replaced Huntington Biles. Steve had uh, reinvigorated, and in fact, he had saved the Men and Boys Choir, uh, which was about to uh, become defunct. And when I came and heard the music uh, that was produced in this church, I was absolutely overwhelmed, and I was a believer. Came from then on, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else on a Sunday morning. Excellent. Now, I know that being faith, the face of Trinity with the official title of Head Usher is only one of the many things that you do here at Trinity and we'll come back to those in a few minutes. But for the moment, I'd like to focus on those experiences that stand out in your memory as you greeted people. Mm. I would imagine that those experiences not only involve the people who attend the services, but also the folks who gather on the green on a daily basis. In my time as head usher, I have greeted bishops, uh, mayors, uh, actors from the Schubert Theater, well-known celebrities in the musical field, but my favorite people to greet are our church family, uh, the ones who make an effort each Sunday to come up these steps and uh, rejoin the rest of the family to celebrate and worship here. And yes, I do take a special interest in extending that invitation to the many uh, people who walk by our church who maybe have no church affiliation or perhaps have not uh, been to a church in a long time. Uh, I'm always active in looking out for people who may be happening by, uh, who might welcome an invitation to come inside and see what we do. Uh, I, if I see somebody standing on the apron during the service looking at our two bulletin boards out front, I figure there's enough interest there that it makes it worthwhile to uh, invite them in. And I would say about half of the time, they will accept the invitation and come in. Very often, they'll stay for the entire service. Wow. Uh, and even if they don't, I invite them to come in and just say a quick prayer. And that nearly always brings people in. Excellent. Uh, and the fact that we offer in our main service on Sunday a healing ministry uh, is yet another attraction. Uh, some of these people who do finally manage to bring themselves into church have not been to church in a long time and they have a lot of baggage to unload and if I'm able to direct them over to the columbarium for some healing prayer uh, inevitably they leave the columbarium with gratitude and smiles uh, I'm very proud of the ministry we do in this church it makes it easy to welcome people here that's wonderful a little earlier Joe I mentioned that you lovingly refer to this building as the dog house <laughs> Would you like to expand on that? I had better expand on that. Um, when Trinity Church was consecrated in 1816, the building was uh, highly encrusted 
with architectural gingerbread, we used to call it. Uh, crenellations along the roof lines, and uh, according to the architect, something called frustrums here and there. And all of that decoration serves to soften the profile of the church. But when we put a new slate roof on in 1875, about, uh, all of those ornaments were probably weather-worn and needing a lot of care, and they were removed. And that resulted in the exterior of our building having a comparatively austere appearance, uh, which I likened to a doghouse, uh, <laughs> lovingly. Uh, but for me, that is well compensated for by the incredible experience of walking through our narthex doors for the first time and seeing the interior of this jewel box, which again on the outside is austere and on the inside is an absolute riot of color and gold leaf and organ pipes and everything you could want in the church. Um, speaking of organ pipes, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here. Um, the organ is something that you are very much attached to and it's also something that has played a role, that, no pun intended there, in your uh, professional life. Uh, would you like to talk a little about that? Sure. Um, I, I came to New Haven in 1968 to work with Aubrey Thompson Allen, who was Aubrey Thompson Allen was the curator of organs at Yale, and he invited me to be his assistant. And I thought about it for about 10 minutes and then decided it would be a good move. And so I moved to New Haven and uh, one of the instruments that Aubrey cared for was the very big organ in Woolsey Hall, uh, which was built by Ernest Skinner, one of my heroes in organ building. And Mr. Skinner's company, and the successors to his company, was the Aeolian Skinner Company. They built the organ here at Trinity Church. And it has been my privilege to look after this instrument for the last 50-some years. Uh, it is a large instrument. It has almost 5,000 pipes makes it one of the largest church organs in New England, probably. Uh, but what is really wonderful about it is that it comes from a wonderful uh, company that was at the peak of its powers. It was designed by G. Donald Harrison, and it was uh, installed in 1935. And it, the main organ uh, is virtually unchanged since that time, uh, which is quite an accomplishment. It gives us quite a, uh, a remarkable re musical resource that we can be proud of, and which will be an attraction to finding the next musician. Were you trained as an organ I, I studied with Aubrey, uh, and uh, when Aubrey retired in 1973, his son Nicholas and I uh, formed a partnership, and we have run this company ever since. We have, uh, at the current time, we have four employees, and we not only maintain organs all over New England, but we also uh, restore instruments by the Skinner and Aeolian Skinner companies. And so we're working on an organ in Philadelphia right now, uh, one in Charlottesville, Virginia, and uh, one in Westport. And you're also on the property committee, which is sort of what happens around the organ and yes. in addition to the organ. Well, the, the, the property committee naturally appealed to me because uh, I care very much about this building, and uh, I was pleased to find that on the property committee were others who likewise loved this building, and some of them were architects and had a lot of professional expertise. I'm not an architect, but I have a lot of affection for this place, and I know a lot of the history of it, and so it seemed a natural uh, thing for me to join the property committee. Excellent. Uh, one additional passion of yours is that of leading the men's Bible study on Friday mornings. Tell us a little about that aspect of your life here at Trinity, not only in terms of furthering an understanding of the Bible, but also in terms of the camaraderie that is developed with the participants. Well, uh, shortly after Luke arrived as our rector, uh, it was suggested that we might consider establishing a men's Bible study. And one might well ask, why a men's Bible study? Why not just a Bible study? Have men and women. In my experience, men will respond differently in the company of all other men. When women are present, men are more guarded in what they say. And I wanted a forum in which we would serve as a band of brothers 
who would read scripture and reflect on it together. Uh, this is not uh, a, uh, an incredibly sharply honed uh, exegesis of scripture. Uh, it is rather a reading of the Sunday scripture and then individual reflections that sort of tie it to our own personal lives. Uh, we are about eight people. We are always looking for new members. We meet both here at the church and via Zoom on Friday mornings. And uh, over the last 10 years or so, uh, we have grown very close to each other. And this is precisely what I took for when Excellent. we all started. Um, do you have anything else that you'd like to highlight? As I want to talk a little bit about volunteering. Uh, when I first started attending Trinity Church, I was aware of the fact that it was a larger church with a large congregation, and it seemed to be very well run. Uh, all the things that one looks for in a healthy parish were here. Uh, after coming for a while, I began to realize that all of this effort was, uh, was expended by members of the congregation who cared about the church, cared enough to donate their time to various aspects. And some people were interested in uh, running for the vestry. Some people wanted to uh, work with outreach. Some people were interested in worship aspect. But all these people came together, uh, adding their talents in various areas of volunteering. And I was very happy that I found several uh, opportunities for me to work uh, in this church. At first, I signed up for almost every committee that came down the road. And I was here practically every night of the week. And after a while, I began to think that this is not really the purpose for doing this. It's not a matter of, of wanting to control things. It is more a matter of wanting to serve. And there is a limit to how much one can serve well. So I, I let some of the things go. And now I'm pretty much confined to the Bible study, the uh, ushering, and the uh, 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 property committee. Uh, the other thing I want to add regarding the ushering, and that is I am especially proud of our group of ushers that uh, serve uh, on a regular basis. We have about 20 people, and these people are, um, they represent a cross-section of our parish, and I'm especially proud of them because they all have understood the idea of being welcoming. And not just welcoming to our regular parish family, but welcoming to the stranger. That is our commission. And something that I think is essential that we do if we're going to make this a successful church that lasts well into the future. Well, excellent. Well, that concludes our interview. Um, thank you very much, Joe, for telling us all about your my, volunteerism here. My at pleasure. Trinity, and it's been a pleasure talking with you. Nice talking with you, too.